Back in 1912, when a young Indian lawyer was thrown off a train for sitting in a compartment reserved for whites, the event didn't make the headlines. After all, this was an era when racially based oppression was part of everyday life in South Africa and all over the world. The experience did, however, make a profound impression on the individual involved and it inspired Mohandas Karam Chand Gandhi to embark on a course that would make him the Mahatma. This moment in history was commemorated with a special event held in Peter Maritzburg recently and Mela attended the celebrations. As the capital of the province of KwaZulu-Natal, Peter Maritzburg makes up in status what it may lack in size compared to its sister city at the coast. It's an absolutely spectacular day here in Peter Maritzburg and it's also my first time visiting. So I'm really looking forward to explore the city and more importantly to attend the 125th anniversary of the birth of the Satyagraha philosophy. Visiting the city can feel like a trip back in time, especially when walking through the foyer of a property that dates back to the last quarter of the 19th century. Hello. Good day, Michelle. How are you? I'm really happy to be in Peter Marisburg. You're welcome to our hotel. I hope you enjoy your stay. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, Michelle. Hello. How are you? I'm really happy to be welcome here. Welcome to the Imperial Hotel. My name is Ruben. I'm the general manager of the hotel. So now, this is over 100 years old. Now, if these walls could talk, what stories would they tell me? The building was constructed in 1877 as the mayor's residence for Peter Marisburg. Then it was converted into a hotel in 1878 and actually then he became a resident for the Prince Imperial of France, who was the son of Napoleon III, Napoleon Bonaparte. Actually, you're in time for high tea. I'd love to, thank you. After you, sir. The hapless prince met his end in a skirmish with Zulu warriors in 1879, and it's said that his ghost still stalks the felt, but he hasn't been spotted in the corridors of the Imperial. Many buildings of a bygone era still stand in the contemporary city, and only the fashions and the vehicles offer hints of the changing times. Michelle would be staying in a suite named after another prince, this time with a British connection, so a cup of tea was in order. So we have a surprise for you here. I would like to introduce you to our executive head chef, oh, Jonathan. Okay. This is Michelle. This looks incredible. Well, we stuck to the traditional high tea and then mixed it up a little bit with the diverse culture of South Africa. We brought into play phyllo pastry quiche, smoky barbecue chicken wings, vegetable stir fry, smoked salmon, horseradish crostini, and a panko prawn. All right, Michelle, I'm going to rush and do some other things, but take care and we'll meet again. Thank you so much. Wow. Peter Maritzburg definitely knows hospitality. I don't know where to start. I could sit here all day, but I better finish up if I want to discover more of the city. Refreshed, Michelle took a walk around the city's red brick colonial heritage. The first thing that catches your eye is the Peter Maritzburg City Hall Tower. But what I also discovered is that it holds a record for the biggest brick building in existence today. Tonight, it plays host to the commemoration event. The architecture is reminiscent of Mumbai's famous railway station. But the nearby Natal Museum hosts a showcase of South African history, both natural and cultural. An entire gallery is dedicated to a permanent exhibition of artifacts tracing the story of Natalians of Indian origin from the arrival of indentured workers to the development of a community. Hello. Hi. It's my first time here and they told me that I have to stop at the museum. What better place to start where we have such an awesome display on the Indian community in Peter Maritzburg. Before you leave the museum, you must go upstairs and see our Gandhi exhibition. Absolutely, I'll definitely. Thank Good. you so much. Taking Virana's advice, Michelle went up a floor and back a century coming face to face with Gandhiji, with images tracing his path from a young man to an icon of moral authority. Wow, it's an actual replica of the very carriage that Gandhiji was thrown out of. The event recorded by this exhibit would form the focal point of the commemorations later that evening and the following day. But for the moment, Michelle was keen to see the city's further tributes to the Mahatma. A beautiful bronze statue depicting the Mahatma in his prime. 
What really strikes me is his determined gaze. But I think on a personal level, what captures the moment is his motto, my life is my message. The city centre offers a cross-section of colonial era styles, from neoclassical to Renaissance revival. I've enjoyed taking in the sights and sounds of Peter Maritzburg, especially the historical buildings. But the sun is about to set, so I'm going to freshen up for tonight's event. With senior representatives of the governments of India and South Africa attending the commemorative events, Peter Marisberg dressed up for the celebrations. As a mark of respect, the City Hall has been lit up in the national colours to commemorate the occasion. The gala dinner is about to start, so I better take my seat. The evening events marked the beginning of a two-day program, which included the inauguration of a digital museum dedicated to the Mahatma. Michelle met the curator. Why do you believe that it's so important, especially in today's time, to follow the philosophy of the Mahatma? The easiest way for me to explain the Gandhian philosophy to today's generation at least is an eye for an eye will make the whole world blind. I think it says it all. I think what Gandhi was trying to express was you have to have love as a medium of exchange so that the world can become a much better place to live in. I think the world really needs that today. High-ranking government dignitaries joined leading members of the community for the occasion, with India's High Commissioner to South Africa, Srimati Ruchira Kamboj, addressing the guests. Good evening. All of you in this room are here because you are rooted in two powerful countries. Two countries built upon the foundations of beauty and diversity, warmth in unity and strength in hope. The Mahatma's message remains relevant today as his granddaughter Ella Gandhi explained. I think that, you know, the barriers that we have created in society have to be broken down. And these barriers are created by us. We have taught our children, and from generation to generation, people begin to see human beings not just as a neighbor or a friend, but this one is a particular race group, particular gender, and so on. And those are the barriers that we have to break down. Ella Gandhi's call for the barriers of race, class, culture and gender to be broken was echoed symbolically by the performers, while the link between the Mahatma and Madiba was traced by India's Consul General in Durban, Dr. Shashank Vikram. Gandhiji and Mandela both are lights of humankind and today we have gathered here to imbibe that message and to spread that message to as many people as they can and this is one message and one philosophy which can only create a better world. Had he not been so innately humble, one could imagine the Mahatma feeling a glow of pride in what had been achieved in India and South Africa and the celebrations would continue.